Welcome back, precious ones. We all know how important prayers are as Christians. But in today's video, Dr. Mesa Otabel talks about how to pray like Elijah. Remember to watch this video till the end in order to know how Elijah prayed. Keep watching. A little exhortation. It's titled Praying Like Elijah. Praying Like Elijah. And uh, turn with me to the book of 1 Kings chapter 17 verse 1. 1 Kings chapter 17 verse 1. Uh, 1 Kings chapter 17 verse 1 is, uh, is an exciting introduction of a remarkable individual uh, in the Bible. This is the first time he's appearing in the Bible. Uh, his name is Elijah. And uh, Elijah was a great prophet of God. Uh, most of you know about him, you've read about him, and how God used him profoundly uh, in a very precarious time in the life of Israel. So, 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 1. And it reads, And Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years except at my word. That's how Elijah is introduced in the Bible. He blows into the pages of the Bible almost like a whirlwind. Uh, there's no previous mention of him. And he shows up and he's making a bold and audacious declaration before King Ahab. There shall be no rain, no dew, for years, unless I say so. Now that's something very bold to tell the king. Elijah appears in the story of Israel at a very difficult time in the life of Israel. It is at a time when the nation is in apostasy. The nation has backslided. The king, King Ahab, had married a very evil woman called Jezebel. And the two of them have introduced a new religion to Israel called Baalism or the worship of Baal, which was a predominant religion around there. But in introducing the religion of Baal, they set out to persecute the priests and the prophets of God. Priests are killed, prophets are killed, People have run away from the country and the prophets of Baal have taken over the whole land. And there's nobody who can speak up for Jehovah. The nation is in total apostasy. And so Elijah appears from nowhere from a place called Tishbi. He's called a Tishbite. He asks, what is a Tishbite? He's a citizen of Tishbi. And where is Tishbi? Nobody knows. Subsequent archaeological study, nobody has been able to, to, they haven't been able to conclusively find where Tishbi is. Tishbi is probably a village in the middle of nowhere. It's like somebody from Gomua, China. Or, I mean, some, some village that nobody knows about. And he shows up and walks to the Flagstaff house and makes a bold declaration to the to the president and walks out. Who is this guy? Elijah! There shall be no rain! No dew! Except I say so. Now you, you would ask, why did he make those declarations? Because the, the God Baal, or the Baal, that the Israelites were worshipping was considered the God of the storm or the God of rain. He's a rainmaker God. So Elijah is saying, you are worshipping a God you say makes rain. I say he cannot make rain and there'll be no rain until I say so. It's a spiritual challenge in the heavenlies as well as a physical challenge to the king. And Elijah makes a proclamation, there will be no rain. And for three and a half years, there is no rain. Something very interesting about him. 
Now, when we encounter this Elijah, he's making a declaration. Everybody say declaration. He's making a declaration. And we don't know what he had been doing before he made the declaration. But he shows up saying, there shall be no rain. So let's go to the book of James in the New Testament because James gives us a perspective on Elijah. James chapter 5, verse 17 and 18. James is getting to the end of the Bible, getting to the book of Hebrews. You'll find James. Chapter 5. Now, much of chapter 5, James is talking about prayer. And he said, he asks, if anyone afflicted, let him pray. If anyone is happy, let him praise. If anyone is sick, let him call for the elders of the church. Let them anoint him with oil. Let prayer of faith shall save the sick. And if they have committed any sins, their sins will be forgiven. Then he says, confess your sins one to another pray for one another and you'll be healed so he's teaching about prayer and then as he talks about prayer he gets to verse 17 and 18 and listen to what he says about elijah it says he says elijah was a man with a nature like ours and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain and it did not rain on the land for three years and six months and he prayed again and the heaven gave rain and the earth produced its fruit elijah is introduced as a man like us james says elijah wasn't any extraordinary guy i mean although when you you hear of him first you think wow what a man but james is saying he's just like us because as, as you read later about the life of elijah you realize he had fears anxieties depression like everybody else when he was threatened he ran away when he was in trouble he felt abandoned so he's a man like each one of us but he did something very remarkable what made him do so what what was the power behind elijah that made him come and make that bold declaration to the king well if you read the book of james it tells us what elijah did before he made his declaration the bible says he prayed earnestly that it should not rain but when you read kings it didn't say he prayed he just said something but james is saying elijah prayed so if you put the thing two together it means that elijah was praying for a period maybe he had been praying for a month maybe he had his own spiritual emphasis month where he was praying and fasting lord let there be no rain he's praying and praying and praying and praying and praying and then he comes out and makes a bold declaration so what you see with elijah is that he prays he makes a declaration he prays earnestly he makes a declaration he prays earnestly he makes a declaration and that's what we're going to do today we're going to pray and we're going to make a declaration like elijah we're also going to make some decrees and when he said there be no rain there was no rain and he actually didn't limit it to rain he said and dew as well no rain no dew and the land goes into farming because there's no rain it's an agrarian society there's no rain no dew so there's no food and everybody's broke but elijah is fed although he himself became part or experienced part of the suffering god sustained him and provided for him ravens fed him and a widow fed him most unlikely sources of supply but god fed him and uh, he continued to have this encounter with israel the king ahab a very wicked king his wife a very evil woman wanted to kill him sent people to look out for him but god protected him then one day elijah comes back after three and a half years 
And he says, go tell the king. I'll meet him on Mount Carmel. He should bring his prophets of Baal. And we're going to meet on Mount Carmel. Very bold guy. It's like somebody who, who goes to the Flystaff house and they say, hey, tell the president. We'll meet at the Black Star Square or Independence Square. And we'll see who is who. He says, let him come to Mount Carmel. Israel has been confused for too long. We knew Jehovah. The king has introduced Baal. Baal has his prophets. Let them meet me. And let's decide for once who is the true God. And they take him serious. And they meet on Mount Carmel. And on the mountain, Elijah said, this is the test. We're going to present a sacrifice to our God. Normally a sacrifice should have fire, but there will be no fire. And the God who answers by fire, let him be God. If your God does it, I'll worship him. If mine does it, you worship him. It's simple, simple logic. So they go to Mount Carmel. The prophets of Baal, over 400 of them. They set up this altar. Kill a bull. Cut the bull into pieces, put it on the altar. And begin to pray from morning. They pray and chant and pray and chant and do all the things they're supposed to do. And nothing is happening. And Elijah begins to count them and say, well, shout a bit louder. Maybe he's, he's doing stuff. Wherever he's gone to. He, he, you have to call him to come and help you. And they call and call and call and then nothing is happening. Then the priests of Baal begin to cut themselves with the knives. Blood is gushing out from their bodies. This is extreme intense engagement in the realm of the spirit but nothing is happening because somebody is locking bow from operating and that's Elijah and they continue praying and nothing happens so Elijah said well you've done your best now let me do what I have to do let me set my altar they said he sets his altar they kill the bulls cut their meat put it on the altar and he says, well, you know, just to show you who God is, just get 12 barrels of water and pour it on the problem. In other words, just make it more difficult. Just complicate the problem. So they pour 12 barrels of water on the offering. Dig trenches. There's water. There's blood. There's meat. There's stone. And it's all there. And he says, Lord God, Jehovah. If you are the one who sent me and you are the God who is the ruler of the heavens and the earth, then let's show a sign so all these people would know that there is a God in Israel. And fire comes down from heaven. And burns the whole sacrifice. sacrifice is burned the water is burnt the sacrifice is burnt the stones are bent the whole nation bows down and say the Lord is God the Lord is God the Lord is God there is no God like Jehovah there is no God like Jehovah and after this great thing has happened Elijah did something let's go back to first Kings first Kings chapters 18 First Kings chapter 18. First Kings chapter 18 verse 41 to 46. It says, Then Elijah said to Ahab, Go up, eat and drink, 
for there is a sound of abundance of rain so ahab went to eat and drink and elijah went up to the top of mount carmel then he bowed down on the ground and put his face between his knees and he said to his seven go up now look toward the sea so he went up and looked and said there is nothing and seven times he said go again and it came to pass the seventh time that he said there is a cloud as small as a man's hand rising out of the sea so he said go up say to ahab prepare your chariot and go down before the rain stops you now it happened in the meantime that the sky became black with clouds and wind and there was a heavy rain so Eli ahab rode away and went to jezreel then the hand of the lord came upon elijah and he got out of his loins and ran ahead of ahab to the entrance of jezreel two declarations one to stop the rain the other to bring the rain why did elijah have so much power what was his secret he's a man like us according to james what was his secret what was the difference with him what did he know that when we know can also operate with the authority he operated in operated in the first thing you see about elijah is relentless prayer relentless prayer james says he prayed earnestly earnestly that it should not rain and it did not rain he prayed earnestly so he was relentless in prayer he, he prayed with intensity and passion the second thing about elijah was that he knew the reality of god the reality of god he said as long as as the lord god of israel lives what elijah is saying is god is alive he's real king ahab says god is dead Baal's prophet says god is dead but i'm here to let you know god is real if we're going to see power in our lives we have to come with relentless prayer but we have to also be confident in the reality of god that he's real he's alive we don't just believe a, a list of myths we believe the reality of god the reality of god relentless prayer the reality of god and the third thing about elijah he says as the lord god of israel lies before lives before whom i stand i stand before god that is relationship with god relentless prayer reality of god and relationship with god these were the three things that set elijah apart relentless prayer reality of god relationship with god he says as the lord god lives before whom i stand now remember at the time he's making this declaration he's standing before ahab but he says mr ahab mr king i stand before you physically but i'm not here because of you i am here standing on a higher authority higher than yours before god i stand you have to be able to say before your doctor that i'm standing before god so the word of your doctor does not overrule the word of god before your bank manager your loan officer you say i stand before god before the visa officer you say i stand before god i have a relationship with god i don't need to know you once i know him that's enough because he rules in the heavenlies and the heavens will rule over the earth the lord god before whom i stand mr king that's the secret of elijah and he makes this bold declaration there shall be no rain he did not consult metro division definitely not the ghana metro 
didn't consult them. There shall be no rain. Unless I say so. Then after three and a half years, after Mount Carmel, he says to the king, Mr. King, you can now get into your limousine and get the security people to take you quickly out of here. Otherwise, this rain is going to stop you because I hear the sound of abundance of rain. At the time he said that, there was no rain. Then after he had made the declaration, I hear the sound of abundance of rain, he goes back to Mount Carmel. He stands on that same mountain, the place of spiritual authority. And he bows down his head and puts his head between his knees. What is he doing? He's not just posturing he's praying he has said something now he has said god back it up i said rain is coming i ask you lord let the rain come and he puts his head between his knees and he's praying and praying the bible says earnestly and he says to his servant, go check for the miracle. Seven comes, no miracle, sir. He says, go again, no miracle, sir. Go again, no miracle, sir. Go again, no miracle. Seven times. The seventh time, the seven comes and says, I see something. A cloud like a man's. Can you imagine a cloud like a man's hand in the midst of this big sky? It's enough to discourage you. After all the prayer, a man's hand. I prayed and prayed and prayed. God, you're showing me just a man's hand of cloud. Is that how rain is made? But Elijah says to the king, move quickly. And the Bible says, in the meantime. What is the meantime? The meantime between the man saying, the hand of a man, and Elijah saying to the king, move. The cloud expands into the whole heavens. And there's an abundance of rain. The pattern you see with Elijah. He prays and makes a declaration. Or he makes a declaration and he backs it with prayer. But he doesn't just pray. But he says it. Let there be no rain. And there is no rain. This morning we're going to pray a similar prayer. And we are going to say what should not be and what should be. Because the key is in our hands. I stand before God and at my word. Everybody say at my word. Say at my word. Say at my word. We're going to make declarations. Let's rise up this morning. Elijah made a profound statement that there will be no rain for three and a half years and it came to pass. Elijah was a man like us so if he was able to pray to resist the rain we can also do same. Elijah was a man of prayer so you can't be a Christian without praying. Elijah also knew the reality of God and he also had a relationship with God. Never joke with the power of prayers because prayers can change everything. Thank you for your precious time. Please do well to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and share this video to as many people as you can in order for them to also learn how to pray just like Elijah did. Also do well to visit Pastor Mensah Utabel's YouTube channel to watch his videos as well. Thank you and stay blessed.